This is lesson 6.3, Tests for Parallelograms. Your objectives are to recognize the conditions that ensure a quadrilateral is a parallelogram and to prove that a set of points form a parallelogram in the coordinate plane. There are many ways to establish that a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. In the last section, we were told that it is a parallelogram, and if it's a parallelogram, then certain things are congruent and certain things are supplementary, like that. However, in this lesson, we don't yet know it's a parallelogram. So we're doing the questions in the opposite direction. Instead of saying, if it's a parallelogram, then opposite sides are parallel, we're instead saying, if both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then it's a parallelogram. So you're saying the converse of these statements. If any of these situations is true, then it's a parallelogram. Both pairs of opposite sides parallel, or if both pairs of opposite sides are congruent, if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, if the diagonals bisect each other, or if one pair of opposite sides is congruent and parallel, then it's a parallelogram. You only need one of those situations to occur, and the shape is a parallelogram. Find x and y so that the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Even though we don't yet know that this is a parallelogram, we're going to make it a parallelogram. And the way the questions work is exactly the same way they worked in the previous lesson. So we have the side links on this one. And since we know that the side links need to be congruent for opposite sides, then it's a parallelogram. So we will make the opposite sides congruent. Start with the x's first. You have two opposite sides, 2x minus 2 and 12. Those are equal to each other. Solve for x. Add 2 to each side. Divide by 2. And x is 7. And now we need the other pair of opposite sides congruent, the 2y and the 8. To make 2y equal 8, divide by 2, and y is 4. So if x is 7 and y is 4, that makes opposite sides congruent, and it makes the figure a parallelogram. For number 2, we're given angle measures. Well, to be a parallelogram, both pairs of opposite angles need to be congruent. Let's start with the x's. 11x and 55 are opposites, so those have to be equal to each other. If both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. Divide by 11, x is 5. Now for the 5y, its opposite angle isn't listed, but we can find it because we know that the missing angle and the 55 degrees have to be supplementary. And 180 minus 55 is 125 degrees. So we need opposite angles congruent. 5y has to equal 125. Divide by 5. And y is 25. If both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then it's a parallelogram. For number 4, I'm given one pair of opposite sides, and I'm given a pair of alternate interior angles. Well, that should be a clue. If they give you alternate interior angles, they're going to be talking about parallel lines. Remember one of the rules. If one pair of sides is both congruent and parallel, then it's a parallelogram. So consider the two lines cut by a transversal. Those alternate interior angles will need to be the same, and the pair of opposite side links need to be the same. Start with the alternate interior angles, 9x equals 45. Divide both sides by 9, and x is 5. 
That makes the two opposite sides parallel. Now to make them congruent. 6y has to equal 18. And when you divide by 6, y is 3. Make alternate interior angles congruent to get parallel sides and make the side lengths congruent. That gives you one pair of sides that's parallel and congruent, which makes a parallelogram. Sometimes you work with parallelograms on the coordinate plane. On the coordinate plane, you can do the distance formula to find side lengths. You can do the slope to see if sides are parallel. And you can do the midpoint to see if the diagonals bisect each other. All of these can test to see if a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. Graph each quadrilateral with the given vertices. Determine whether the figure is a parallelogram and justify your answer with the method indicated. Number one, it gives you the coordinates of the four vertices and it says use the slope formula. Well, we need the slope formula to determine if lines are parallel. Parallel lines have the same slope. So let's find the slope of each side. If opposite sides have the same slope, then they're parallel. For sides A, B, and C, D, we did the slope formula. M equals Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. And they each have a slope of 3. So they're parallel. For sides B, C, and A, D, they each had a slope of 0, which is the same. So those sides are parallel. So both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So yes, it's a parallelogram. Number three gives us the coordinates of the vertices and it says use the distance formula. Well the distance formula will tell us how long the sides are. Let's start with one pair, side RS and side UT. Side RS we can just count since it's horizontal and it has a length of four. Since side UT is diagonal, use the distance formula. The square root of x minus x squared plus y minus y squared. And that gives you the square root of 26. Since 4 is not the same as 26, then we don't have opposite sides congruent. So since opposite sides are not congruent, then no, it's not a parallelogram. Number five gives us the vertices and it says use the distance and slope formulas. Well, distance will tell us if sides are congruent and the slope will tell us if they're parallel. So the route I'm taking here is to see if one pair of opposite sides is congruent and parallel. So let's do the distance and the slope for sides SV and UT. When you do the distance formula, each of those sides has a distance of 5. So we know that the pair of opposite sides is congruent. Now let's do the slope formula to see if they're also parallel. When you do the slope formula, they each have a slope of negative 3 fourths. And since the slopes are the same, it makes them parallel. So we have one pair of opposite sides that is both congruent and parallel. Yes, it's a parallelogram.